I'm the one that sent her to the other world. The culprit who took my mother-in-law's life grinned with joy. I trembled in fear, felt a chill running down my spine, and broke out in a cold sweat when it wasn't even hot. In my hand was a photo of my mother-in-law, her face gruesomely mutilated. On the back were unbelievable words arranged in a line, Well, you're next. The culprit was slowly creeping closer to me. I did my best to run away. My name is Lindo. I have been married to my husband James for about five years. We had a good relationship with our in-laws. And James, being an only child, said, I don't want to make my parents feel lonely. He would take me to visit our in-laws at least once a month. Mom, we're home. James and Linda, welcome. Whenever we returned to my in-law's house, my mother-in-law always greeted us warmly. On the other hand, my father-in-law was usually sitting on the couch, reading his newspaper, and he would only glance at us without any greetings, then return his gaze to the newspaper. Here's a souvenir. Oh, thank you, as always. The gift box of sweets that my husband handed over was labeled in large letters, Super Spicy Crackers. My mother-in-law loved spicy food, but no one else in the family could handle it. If you're going to bring a souvenir, at least bring something everyone can eat. This one's the only one eating the souvenir, and every time she does, she ends up with a stomach ache. Hey, I told you not to tell James that I'm getting stomach aches. If they stop bringing spicy food, it's your fault. The in-laws began to quarrel, and I found myself saying, Come on, let's calm down. But even to me, my father-in-law snapped back harshly. So you're saying it's okay for your mother-in-law to have a stomach ache? I'm the one who's inconvenienced when she hogs the bathroom. You should really stop picking on Linda. Your way of addressing her as you is rude. Can't you even remember a person's name? My intervention seemed to add fuel to the fire, and the quarrel between my in-laws became even more heated. That's when James stepped in to mediate. Sorry, sorry. I just know mom is happy when I give her spicy food. I brought some regular crackers for you, dad. Here, have some if you want. My husband handed the box of crackers to my father-in-law, and the situation was temporarily calmed. Linda, I'm sorry about my husband. I don't know if you would accept this as a token of my apology. To There's something I want to show you. I followed my mother-in-law to her room, where a beautifully patterned dress was hanging. Oh, wow. You're still making such wonderful clothes. My mother-in-law loved to sew her own clothes and made stuffed animals as a hobby. She was also adept at using a computer and actually sold these items on her online shop, with items selling out and making quite a bit of money. About this dress, would you like to have it? Uh, but isn't this an important inventory? I can't possibly accept something like this for free. Don't worry, I made this just for you. I think you'll fit just right, so try it on. Following my mother-in-law's suggestion, I changed into the dress, and it fit me perfectly, as if it were custom-made. My mother-in-law had a special talent. She could tell someone's measurements just by looking at them. Just as I thought, it suits you so well. My mother-in-law was smiling with joy. She was incredibly kind to me, her daughter-in-law, and as I had lost my mother at a young age, she felt like a real mother to me. When James and I went home with the dress, he sighed. My parents can't seem to stop arguing. They might end up divorcing. It's true that I often see them fighting, so perhaps they are not compatible. I thought my mother-in-law must be having a hard time dealing with my gruff and Sharpton's father-in-law. Then one day, my mother-in-law suddenly passed away. She hadn't been feeling well for a while, and I had suggested she see a doctor, but she always said, I'm fine. I loved her so much. If only I had insisted on taking her to a doctor as her daughter-in-law, but not out of obligation. I decided to help with the funeral. I thought this would be my last act of gratitude to my mother-in-law. Just before the funeral started, I wanted to remember my mother-in-law's face one last time, so I softly peeked into the casket. My mother-in-law had her usual gentle expression on her face, as if she were simply sleeping. My eyes were drawn to a photograph in the casket, along with a few other mementos. What? What's this? It was a photograph of my mother-in-law in her usual clothes, I think, but her face had been gruesomely mutilated, as if with a box cutter. Moreover, on the back of the photo were the words, 
Thanks for finally leaving the world, as if someone was happy about her passing. What? What is this? As soon as I saw it, chills ran down my spine. Not knowing who did it, I quickly tucked the photo into the pocket of my black morning dress and closed the casket. I tried to subtly observe the people at the funeral to see who might have done it, but there was no one suspicious. If I had to choose someone, it would be my father-in-law, who did not shed a tear at his wife's funeral and acted as if nothing happened. Isn't he sad? Could it be? Without thinking, I found myself gripping the pocket where I had stowed the photo. It wouldn't be unreasonable to think that there was hidden resentment between my in-laws, who are constantly fighting. Could it really be my father-in-law? I couldn't be sure, so I decided to keep an eye on him a little longer. However, after the funeral, I accidentally overheard a conversation between my father-in-law and husband. The two of them were speaking loudly, unaware that I was hiding behind the door of the living room. Hey, Dad, where's Mom's life insurance policy? Why do you ask? It's probably a hassle with the claims and all that, right? I can handle it for you. Who's the beneficiary? That's none of your business. Listen here, I don't have a penny to give you. What did you say? I'm definitely gonna find it. Even though my husband was trying to help my father-in-law, he was not accepting of it at all. The voice of my husband, who was rejected, was filled with anger. When my father-in-law left the room, my husband slammed his fist into the sofa cushion, saying, Damn it. As I was thinking of what to say to console my husband, he uttered some unexpected words. After all the times I brought gifts, do I gotta deal with my dad too? In that moment, chills ran down my spine. Life insurance, a photo with the words, thanks for leaving this world, and my husband's suspicious words. Could it be? With a mix of belief and doubt, I began to gather evidence. But truthfully, I wanted to prove that the person I suspected was not the perpetrator, rather than identify them as the culprit. However, the more I corroborated, the more undeniable it became that my suspect was, in fact, the culprit. It was a few days after the funeral. I want you to look at this photograph. I held out the photo, and my husband stared at it for a long time. What is this? Who just figured mom's face like this? Thinking to myself, the audacity. I flipped the photo over. The words on the back of this photo, thanks for going to the other side. The handwriting and things look very similar to yours. I presented another note along with the photo. It was a birthday card addressed to me from James, my husband, saying, thank you as always. The particular way he wrote thank you was very similar to the writing in the photograph. That's just your imagination. What are you trying to say, Linda? That's not all. It seems you had a substantial debt to my mother-in-law. Upon hearing my words, his usual gentle smile vanished instantly. His face looked like an expressionless mask, emotionless and blank. Summoning my courage, I continued the conversation. You seemed overly interested in my mother-in-law's life insurance, didn't you? Did you hear that from my dad? He's such a pain, only speaking when he shouldn't. Then there was a heavy silence between us for a while. Please tell me the truth. Do you think I killed my mother because I was in debt? Suddenly, James started to laugh and I felt the same chill I had felt when I saw the photo of my torn apart mother-in-law. Yes, that's right. I was the one that sent her to the other world, he said, laughing. My husband took out a box cutter from his pocket. Well, it's your turn next, he added. The moment he stood up and said that, my feet kicked off the floor towards the entrance, fearing I would meet the same fate as my mother-in-law. I ran out of the house frantically. I couldn't believe James was the culprit and that drastic change in demeanor, I'd never seen that before. Resisting the urge to freeze in shock, I kept running, panting. To the police! I glanced back briefly, but my husband was nowhere in sight. He seemed to have lost sight of me. In fact, I've been a marathon runner since my college days, and I still actively participate in community marathons. So even though James is a man who doesn't run daily, he couldn't catch up to me. Still, he's probably expecting me to run to the nearest police station so he might be keeping watch somewhere. But if I can get to the police, I'll be safe. Looking around, I spotted a police station across the road. Help! I'm being chased! I cried, running inside. To my surprise, the police station was empty. No way, this can't be happening, right? 
I had heard that not all local police stations are staffed around the clock these days. Talk about bad luck. Panicking, I grabbed the phone on the desk and explained the situation to the officer on the other end. Looking out at the station, show I saw my husband approaching swiftly. Don't run away, Linda. Let's go home together, he called, holding a box cutter in his right hand, walking towards me with a menacing grin. Don't come any closer, I darted out, hurling any trash cans and rocks I could find as I made my desperate escape. I ran into a large nearby park, showing my relentless pursuer, my husband, with sand from the playground. The sand seemed to have gotten into his eyes, and he was momentarily distracted covering his face. Seizing this opportunity, I ran and ran and ran. But unfortunately, I tripped and fell at the most crucial moment. This is the end. You're not getting away anymore, my husband yelled, grabbing my arm, and he got me at a life-or-death situation, or so it seemed. Too bad. I've bought enough time. As I spoke these words, the police surrounded my husband. Don't move. We've received a report. Surrender quietly. The park was already surrounded by officers waiting for him. My husband tried to escape, but there were officers behind him as well. Despite his efforts to resist by swinging the box cutter, he was promptly arrested, stomping his feet in frustration. Eventually, my husband was found guilty and sentenced to prison without any chance of parole. Apparently, he had become addicted to splurging at clubs without telling me, borrowed money from his mother by lying, and had no way to pay it back. So, his debt kept accumulating. Apparently, he had planned to kill his mother because he was annoyed by her demanding repayment. Moreover, he had other debts as well and was targeting his own mother's life insurance money to pay them off. It turned out that the gifts he had been giving to his mother when he visited his in-law's house contained substances used for rodent control. She couldn't notice it because of the spicy taste. Increasing the dosage bit by bit, he put his mother to eternal sleep. This was the whole truth. When I reported this, my father-in-law said, If I weep for sending her off, she won't be able to rest in peace in heaven. I couldn't even cry at the funeral. I can't believe James would do such a thing to her. There were tears glistening in his eyes. I visited the grave of my mother-in-law. The sky was beautifully clear, and the weather was calm like her gentle heart. To your mother-in-law, I've avenged for you, so please rest in peace, I told her at the grave and quietly prayed for her. Then my father-in-law asked me to take over the online shop that my mother-in-law had been running. When I reported on the online shop that my mother-in-law had passed away and that I would take over the shop, I received words of condolence and encouragement from the customers of the store. I was happy, as if it were my own thing, to see that my mother-in-law was really loved by everyone. Now that I've taken over my mother-in-law's shop, I sit in front of the sewing machine every day, determined to produce items that live up to the standards of products my mother-in-law used to make.